Hey everyone, welcome to another coding challenge. In this one, we're going to make some 2D tile terrain using random Perlin noise. So you can see here, we've got some some nice textures with um, some grass and sand and water and stuff, and we can move that around using the, the keyboard, um, and we can also generate new terrain. So let's get started. <music> All right, so we're going to do some Perlin noise tile generation. So I'll just quickly set the size of the window and then I'll talk about Perlin noise. So Perlin noise is a type of noise where you can, it's a random number generator essentially, and you can feed it coordinates or not necessarily coordinates, but you can feed it multiple values and it'll spit out a value back for you that'll be between zero and one. So in this case, we'll be feeding it the X and Y location, and then it will give us a value back for that location. So, what this means is we can use... The thing with Perlin noise is all of the values near each other in terms of the X and Y coordinates will all have similar values between 0 and 1. So, say we got the, pixel, uh, the noise at this location, it could be 0 0.8, for example, and then the one next to it could be 0 0.81, and the one above it could be 0 0.79, so they'll all be in the, the same sort of area, and so you get a nice smooth transition between random values rather than just random noise. So what we'll do is I'll quickly, we'll, um, we'll have a look at what this noise looks like just using black and white um, values, and then we can move on to actually putting those different values into different tiles. So. We'll just quickly do a visualization of what the noise looks like and then we'll move on. So I'll just quickly define the, the tile size um, and I'll say it's 20 for the moment, I guess. We can change it. Um, and then just to visualize it, we'll do a, a few for loops and um, we'll set the brightness based on the value we're getting from the noise function. So for in i equals zero, i is less than the width divided by tile size, i plus plus. And then we'll do the same for j, which will do the y um, coordinate. So int j equals 0, j is less than the height on tile size, and then j plus plus. So what that does is it'll just loop through all of the tiles on the screen. And then once we're here, we can use those i and j values to get the noise value. So it'll give us a value between 0 and 1. Um, and then we can times that by 255 to get a brightness value. So we'll just say that fill is the noise at i comma j um, times 255 and then we'll draw a rectangle at i times tile size j times tile size and then the side lengths are tile size and tile size. Um, and I'll quickly say no stroke because we don't want an outline on each tile. Um, and this will actually create something that doesn't look very smooth, like I said it would be. And that's because the i and the j value are going up by one each time. So they're incrementing by one in the for loop. But we probably want it to be less than this. So I'll just quickly show you what we've got so far and then we'll change how much those values change. So if we run this... We sh here we go. So we, you can see that that looks like normal random values. It's just all over the place. But what we can do is we can say we'll get an, a float here and we'll call it scale. Uh, actually, we won't call it scale because that's reserved. We'll call it, um, we'll just call it SCL and I'll say it's scale. So scale equals 0 0.1, we'll say for the moment. And then we can just simply times these values by the scale. And now if we run this, we should see, there you go, it looks more like a sort of cloud and all the values are sort of clumped into regions of these higher and lower values. So these positions where it's white, that means that the random value is closer to one and when they're really dark, um, it's closer to zero. So we can actually sort of zoom in and out essentially using this scale function. So if I make it even smaller, you'll see that, okay, <laughs> that looks like nothing because all of the values are so similar. So if I make it a bit, there you go. So you can see how that's, everything's almost the same on the whole screen. 
and the further you zoom out, so if I put that then to 0 0.5, you'll see that it gets really grainy again. So you, you'll have to play around with this value to get something that works for what you're trying to make, but yeah, so just keep that in mind. So what we're going to do to actually draw the terrain is we're going to have a look at the value that the noise is returning, and then based on that, it'll become a different tile. So for example, we can think of these regions of 1 and 0 to be the height of the map from above. So we could, where it's really, when it's really close to 0, we could make that water, for instance, and then when it's really high, we could make that snow, and then everything in between, we can have like grass and sand. So yeah, I think that's what we're going to try and do. So to do this, what we're going to do is we're going to have a function that will say um, it'll return an integer. So this will what we're going to do is we're going to make a function that based on the x and y coordinates, it'll look at the noise function and then return what type of tile that should be. Or in this case, it'll return the value of the color that we want it to be. So we'll say int get color, I guess, and we'll feed it a float x and a float y. Actually, they could be integers since we're using a tile system. So int x, int y. And then in this, what we're going to do is we're going to say that um, float v equals, and then we'll just use this noise function from up here. So instead of just directly using that value, we'll store it and say that v is equal to, and we'll change that to x, and we'll change that to y. Um, so we're just getting the value of the noise at that location. And then what we'll do is we'll have a, I guess we could use a switch statement on V. And then we'll say if V is less, actually this might make more sense to do just if statements. Okay, so if V is less than, shall we say, 0 0.2 then it'll be water, so we'll want to return, I'll just say water, and I'll sort out the colors in just a second, and then we can say else if v is less than 0 0.5 or 0 0.4, um, then we can say that this will be sand, and then else if v is less than 0 0.7 or something, not too sure, then we could say that this will be grass, and then lastly we'll say else, and so this is everything beneath one, and we'll say that this will be, I don't know, like forest or something. So, um, so in each of these we'll just return a value that corresponds to a colour. So to do this we might change it to um, HSB color mode, which is hue, saturation, and brightness, because then we can just change, we'll leave the saturation and the brightness maximum, and then we can just change the hue, which means we can get a whole range of colors with just one value. So, the water, I, I, I might um, pause the video and come back once I've found some, uh, found some nice colors. Okay, so I've got some colors, but I think I might change this to just return a color, which <laughs> I don't know why I didn't do that at the start, but it'll make it a bit easier. So instead of just returning a number, we'll say return new, new color. And then for most of these, it'll just be like this. Yeah, so the whole reason I had to change it was because I want the forest to be a dark green. So, thanks a lot, forest. 80, 255, and then the brightness, I'll say like 200 or something. So now, what we should be able to do is instead of this fill function here, we should be able to simply say, get color for i and j. So if we run this, we should see that we get some nice colored terrain. Okay, so it's a bit, I don't think I chose those colors very well, but you can see the sort of idea we're getting at here. So we're mapping regions of the random value to be 
different value. So we, we can change these different levels. So for instance, the, um, the water level is the first one. So if we bump this up to say point, point 0.3, oh, point 0.3 and we run this, we should see a lot more water in this map. So, um, oh, one thing I thought, one thing that would be good would be to, we can change the, the seed of the noise value. So this means that it'll get, if you give it the same seed, it will always return the same values um, given the same inputs. But it means that we can, if we change the seed, then we can get, use the same inputs and get different outputs. So what we can say is void um, key pressed. And then we'll say if key equals um, space, then we will say noise seed. And then we can use this thing called millis, which gets the current milliseconds of your computer. So uh, that should work. Oh, right, yeah. And then I need to close the bracket and I need to close that bracket. So if we press the, the um, space bar, it won't actually change anything yet because we're only drawing the tiles once. So I can spam the space bar and it won't do anything. But what we can do is then we can also, instead of putting this in the setup, we could take that out and say, draw, um, void, draw, terrain, like that, and pop that code in there, and then we can say, get new, change the seed, and then we will draw the terrain, and I guess we should put a draw terrain up here as well. So if we run this, we should see that when we hit the space bar, then we get different values for the, um, the terrain. So obviously this doesn't look particularly good because we're just using just colors. Um, but so you could actually change this instead of being colors, you could get it re to return um, a, an image and you could draw that image onto the screen. So I might try and quickly find some, some sprites or something, or I might make my own. Um, and we'll put those in as the uh, as the tiles instead of just colors. So if you just give me a sec, um, we'll get onto it. Okay, so having spent way too long drawing some textures, we're finally ready to put them in. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create um, a P image array like that, and we'll call it um, sprites like that. And we'll say that's a new uh, P image array with four things in it, because we'll have four sprites. And then in the setup function, we'll say uh, sprites, oh, sprites zero equals load image. And it is called, so the first one we'll want is the water.png. And then we'll want a bunch more of these. So we'll say sprites one is the sand one. And then number two is the grass one. And then number three is the forest one. Now, these sprites are really terrible and I'm sure that you could do a better job at making them than me. Um, and I encourage you to do that because these ones are terrible. Um, but so you, you can use this system for pretty much anything that you'd like. So, oh, one thing quickly is that I made the sprites 16 by 16 pixels. So I'll just quickly change the tile size to be the same as the sprites. Otherwise there'll be some weird, uh, like stretching and whatnot going on. So you could do it if you did it bigger than, if you want the tiles to be bigger than the images, then you're probably
probably want to go up in multiples of two. So you'd want to like double the size of it. Um, okay, and then so down here in the get color, instead of get color, we're going to call this, I don't know, um, get, get tile and we'll change it to an int. Um, and so it's just going to return the position in the array that we want. So this will be zero, this would be um, one, this would be two, and this will be three. Really simple. And then instead of fill, what we're going to do, and instead of rectangle, what we're going to do is we're going to say image, and it's going to be the sprite um, get tile at x, uh, sorry, i and j, and it's going to be at position i times tile size, j times tile size. We don't actually need these tile sizes in here since they're the same, the image and the tile size are the same, but if you're going to make them bigger, then you'd still need that in there. So I'll just leave it in there for the moment. So when we run this, we'll see my awful sprites. <laughs> so there you go. The water one's not too bad. The other ones are pretty bad. I don't know. <laughs> um, yeah, so those are, that's how you use, um, yeah, this is how you can make some, some tile based, uh, random terrain. So you can see that there's still some, some weirdness going on. So you can see that, um, I don't know, like there's just random one tile of, of something. So you can, you can play around with, as I was saying before, like the, the scaling factor will change it fairly significantly so we could go up a bit and it'll be a bit more changed yeah so it'll be like that or we could go the other way and say point zero point zero seven or something and it should be a bit smoother and then also playing with these different values down here will really change what's happening so at the moment you can see you can think of these as like percentages of chances that it will happen so there's a, a 30 percent chance that a tile will be water there's a 10% chance because um, this V value is between 0 0.3 and 0 0.4. So there's 10% chance it'll be sand. And then there'll be a 30% chance it'll be water. And then another 30% chance it'll be forest. So you could easily play around with these. So you might want to like bump up the water um, and then more sand. And then there's like hardly any grass and then lots of forest. So if we run this, you should see, yeah. So there's a lot more sand and water now. So you, you can play around with these values and you can put in more and more types of tiles. You don't have to limit yourself to four. Um, one thing we might want to do quickly as a last thing is try and move this map around. So we're going to do that by using um, just an offset for when we're getting the noise values. So, oh, this could be tricky. So we'll just start out by saying float x off and actually we'll set it equal to zero and y off equals zero as well. And then what we can say is in the key pressed, we can say if key equals w, then y offset minus equals speed. And we'll make, we'll make that speed variable. So float speed, it'll probably have to be pretty small. I don't know, like that, uh, where were we here? So if w, then we, minus speed on the y if it's s then we add speed on the y and then oh didn't copy it all and then we've got a and d so if it's a we want to minus speed yep and that should be up so we'll just try this i i think this might be a bit glitchy but we'll try it so we'll say x offset plus x times scale and y offset plus y times scale to get the tile value. So if we, nothing is happening. Oh, of course. So we're not actually redrawing the terrain if any of these buttons are pressed. So we need to do that and then draw terrain. So actually what we probably want to do realistically is just draw the terrain in the draw loop. So now, oh, you can see that that does huge jumps when I press the, the arrows. So the speed's obviously way too high. 
So we probably want it. We want it probably pretty close to the scale or even smaller. So one thing you'll notice that's kind of glitchy about this is yeah, you can really see it here, is that we're because we're changing where we're picking the values of the noise from. It can change if something's right on the border between two. It could change which value it's returning. So you can see here that some some tiles that are water will change into sand when I'm moving the the map around. Yeah, so that needs to uh, we need to fix that somehow. So one way you could do this is to I guess oof. How could you do it? So, I think what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to make a an int array called tiles and we're going to have to Okay, I'm going to store the number of tiles in the width and the height. So, um actually int w and h and we'll say that after oh after the size we'll say that w equals width on um, tile size and h equals height on tile size and then we can say in this for loop instead here we can just say width and height um, and then we'll also use width and height to set the size of the tile array. So tiles equals new int and it will be width times height like that. So what we're going to do is instead of just drawing directly to the uh, directly to the screen from the, the noise values, so instead of just doing images sprite da, 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 da. instead what we're going to do is we're going to store all the values into this um, tiles array and then we're going to um, draw from that tiles array to the screen so that means we'll have we'll be able to shift that the tiles that we've currently got stored around the screen instead of having to move the values that we're choosing from if that makes sense so um, what we're going to do is we're going to say, <sighs> let's see, we'll need the offset, uh, we, so we might need to have extra size around the sides of the screen so that when we're moving these values around, we don't see any black space, but we can deal with that in a sec, so you'll be able to see what I mean in a second. So what we're going to do is instead of say draw terrain, I guess we can say draw terrain, but we'll say for, we're going to have to do this twice essentially, once to get all the values and then once to actually draw it to the screen. So we'll say here instead that um, tiles i plus j times width. So I've talked about this before um, for getting the uh, 1D, the tile array is just one big list, but we're trying to use X and Y coordinates to find it. So we're using this little formula, I plus J times width to find the position in that array. So I'll put up a little uh, image trying to explain that a bit better now. Okay, so we're going to say that that position in the tiles array at i and j equals the get tiles at i and j. And then we'll, instead of drawing it from the, the get tiles thing, we'll say we'll get it from tiles i plus j times width instead. Oh, a times, a, a plus, a plus. I, I plus. What am I saying? Ooh. Anyway. Um, and we need another one of those. So, 
now, if we run this, it'll be the exact same because the offsetting and everything is still the same. So what we need to do is we need to only offset the actual values that we're getting here when the offset of the pixels is greater than one tile size, if that makes sense. So, um, so we're going to have to have an offset for drawing it and an offset for generating. So I might change the names of these. So we'll say we've got the X render offset, Y render offset, and then the X terrain offset and Y terrain offset. And then what we're going to do is, oh, so we're going to have to deal with that in just a second. Um, okay, so we're also going to have X and Y. And we'll say that X, Y, oh no, sorry, Y and Y, X and X. Okay, and then in the draw terrain, what we're going to say is the X render offset, X render offset equals um, the X value modulo the scale. Um, and we'll do the same for the Y. like this, and then we'll say that the uh, the terrain offset, XTO, equals X divided by scale, and this has to be a an int, I think, yeah, and YTO equals int Y on scale. So what what we're doing is the terrain offset. So what, what's happening at the moment is that we're moving where we're selecting the, uh, we're selecting the values from. So what we're doing in this is that we're waiting till we've moved the full width of a tile before we're shifting the offset so that we're only offsetting by the same amount each time, which means that we should get, um, the same tile showing up in the same spot. So, this should be good for getting the tile. So instead of here, instead of ox offset, we need the X terrain offset and the Y terrain offset. And then when we draw it, instead what we want to do is we want to say, we want to get the, the position minus the X render offset and minus the Y render offset. So now I think think let's give it a shot so now if we move around oh of course of course so this shouldn't be scale this should be tile size oh, I was getting mixed up all right, so tile size, tile size, tile size, tile size. So now, hopefully, no, I made it worse. I made it much, much, much worse. So that's good. Okay, so I think my speed was just way too slow. So, um... We'll, we'll try speeding him up a bit. And then also, I'm gonna, in, in the draw function, I'm going to clear the background before I draw a new time. So this will make it really obvious um, when... So you can see that there's this black line on the side. And when we're moving, you can see how it's generating new tiles as we're scrolling through the... Uh, scrolling through the world. So to fix that, we're just going to have a little buffer of tiles on each side. Um, and actually I can get rid of all these print statements that were there while I was debugging. Um, where's the other one here? So, so what we're going to do is we're going to say, um, int buffer and we're going to say, um, 10. And so we'll put a buffer on each side of the window 
So we'll have to say that this, the tiles now has to incorporate that buffer. So it'll be W plus buffer and height plus buffer. And then we'll also have to take that into account when we're generating the tiles and also when we're, oh no, not when we're generating them, just when we are, oh yeah, no, when we're generating them. <laughs> so that needs to be plus buffer and this needs to be plus buffer and then this needs to be plus buffer and then one more, this needs to be plus buffer and then when we're getting the value, we need to say that, um, so we need to subtract from I buffer on two, because we need to shift it all across a little bit to keep the edges on each side. So otherwise it would just have all the buffer on one side, but we want it split between the two. Um, so we need to do the same for J as well. So minus buffer on two. And now we should see that the screen fills. Yep. And when we move around, oh, there's something weird going on. So over here, there's a, a gap and I assume it's because I've done the wrong, wrong thing with the buffer. Oh, right, 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 right. So in here, you know what, instead of all this plus buffer stuff, so the problem we we're getting was that when we're retrieving the tiles, we're only counting the row width as the original width without the buffer. So what I'm going to do is instead of all these plus buffers is I'm just going to add the buffer at the start to these values, just so that we don't have to litter our code with plus buffer. And, and cause every time we need width and height, it needs the buffer as well. So I'll just say here plus buffer plus buffer, and then I can remove it from here as well. And then I think we'll have a finished, don't mark, don't hold me to that, but I think this will be done. So now if we move around the screen, we can see that that glitch is no longer there and we can use the arrow keys to move around and we've got some, some nice 2D terrain. So, and also when I press the space button, we get randomly generated new terrain. So that's pretty cool. We made it barely. <laughs> it's taken me a long time. I don't know how long I've been recording for, but it's been a while. Um, so yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, we've made some terrain, so you can use this in a game. I've made a few games with it. They're not finished, but, um, I don't think they ever will be finished, but they, yeah. So they use a system very similar to this. So maybe one day I can make a video on some of my old projects. Let me know in the comments if you'd like to see some of them. Um, but yeah, so we've used Pale and Noise to create 2D tile terrain. Um, so yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you got something out of it. I know it was a bit rambly, but um, hopefully it wasn't too bad. Um, in the description, there'll be a few links. So there'll be all the code. You can find all the code for this on my GitHub, which will be linked below. And also you can find processing. So you can download processing and actually use the code. Um, and then lastly, there's a link to my website where you can... Uh, see some of my other projects and you can vote on topics that you want to see in future videos. So yeah, thank you so much for watching. Um, if you want to, there's a subscribe button down there somewhere that you could, you're more than welcome to hit it. Um, yeah. Thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.